October, can't believe I'm saying October, <laughs> open <laughs> studio. Um, you know, I've been teaching the pop-up classes, they've uh, workshops. They've been at a variety of different uh, lengths of time. Well, uh, not the duration, but in between one or the other. I'm trying to do one a month now. And, you know, I thought after the last one, I taught that we only focused on one way to blend. And I thought that was, this would be a nice topic for uh, open studio so that you can see some of the different ways, uh, maybe do some experimenting yourself and, you know, get an idea for uh, blending. Now I'm gonna make a distinction here. Well, let me go back. Anyone who has their uh, microphone on, if you could just mute yourself, uh, feel free to turn it off and ask questions. Uh, it just keeps it nice and quiet in the background. Uh, I can't do that, but the dogs are on the other side of the door. <laughs> so we should be okay. Um, when, I, when I'm referring to blending, I'm referring to uh, two colors, multiple colors that are actually combined, but not rubbed together so overtly that we lose the colors that are there. And um, I think that's one of the key traits of blending that sometimes uh, people become a little bit overzealous and I know I have in the past and you wind up rubbing away like crazy and it's a perfect way of making mud, especially if you haven't paid attention to your color combinations. So when I'm talking about blending, I am still very aware of the fact that I want to have colors still see a little sitting on top of one another next to one another. I don't want to obliterate them so that we don't know what colors that I was actually using. And what happens with that? You really wind up with a far more, um, um, what's the word I'm trying, translucent effect because you've got the particles of a variety of colors that are actually still there. You haven't ground them to death into into your uh, pastel paper. So everything I'm gonna talk about today, I would say, use a light hand, okay? Um, now, there's a, all, the other thing I want to uh, just make a distinction about, when I'm talking about blending, I'm talking about it as a technique for painting. I'm not talking about blending in terms of trying to take color off. And I'll show you a couple of things, ways that you can do that if you're not happy with color how you can take off the pastel. But that's a, that's a little different. That's not, uh, in my uh, terminology, what blending is. <laughs> okay, so a couple of things we're going to use. I've got three different types of paper. I have UART, I think it's 400. This is a piece of Lux, and this right here is a piece of pastel mat. And I think what I'm gonna do is just move it in one. You don't need to see me anymore. And let's see if we can get that just a little bit closer. Right. And let's just turn it slightly. As much of the pre-planning I do with laying everything out, sometimes things just don't. <laughs> so here, you can see all of this. Rassi, this here, yes. Rassi, can you repeat the kinds of paper you have there? Okay, yes. This is, um, here, let me put it right on here. This is UART. That is a U, not a V, even though it looks like it. Uh, oh, this is a 600. This is Lux. And this is Pastel Mat. Thank and you. Pastel, no problem. It's actually a good idea to write it up there because you are going to notice a little bit of a difference. And that was the other thing I wanted to show you is that, you know, based on the type of um, surface you have, you know, you will get different effects. But if you're gonna try this at home, a couple of things I would uh, suggest is that you have a color wheel, okay? Because what's gonna happen is, is that color wheel is going to help you identify, you know, uh, blending so you don't wind up with uh, mud. Even if you are using a light hand, you can still wind up with mud. And mud's created when, you know, colors that um, are put together actually create something that's um, beyond neutral. Uh, you've, bl you've blended too many colors together. So uh, one of the easiest ways to uh, set up an idea for blending is to think of your analogous colors, okay? 
the colors that are next to each other in the color wheel. And that is the order that you're going to actually lay them out to blend. And of course it depends which direction you're going, but you know, if you, and you don't have to use all six, this color wheel uh, just sets it up this way. Is it six or is it seven? It's seven. Um, but it's the analogous colors. You wanna bear that in mind. If you're trying to neutralize when you blend, you really wanna look at your complementary colors. So you're, you're taking and you're looking at colors that are opposite one another on the color wheel. This color wheel is the gardener's color wheel. And I like it because one side is for tints and the other side has shades on it, lighter, darker, your pure or your, uh, your base color is on the outside. So you've got them all listed there, your uh, primary, secondary, and your tertiary colors. So it's very nice. Uh, if I know some of you have this, the analogous color wheel is great because again, it's these colors here that when they're laid out in order, you wind up being able to blend without creating a, you know, really a very muddy or, um, What's a, you know, I mean, neutral is okay. There's nothing the matter with something being neutral. It's just, uh, I guess I'm always looking at it in terms of what colors can I see in there? What, what colors exist? And when something turns to mud, in my eyes, that uh, definition means that I cannot see any colors because there's been so many that have been put together. There is now not even a dominant color. They're, they're just all totally mixed together. Now, if you were uh, using um, a, a liquid medium, you would be talking about mixing ahead of time and then doing some blending. As a pastel painter, our job is really to choose based on the color wheel and what we're going for. Contrast, complementary colors, uh, uh, gradual change, analogous colors. And you can uh, you know, do a variety with that. So. That is the one tool, a couple of these. Now, I'm gonna show you uh, these and I'm gonna do them in order of um, their size, more or less. This is a uh, pipe foam insulation. It is just what you've seen. If you've been to my open studios, I do use pipe foam insulation for a variety of things, but uh, it is the same thing plumbers use. It's really inexpensive. You can go to the um, hardware store and buy a, a, one of their long tubes of it and then just cut it into small pieces. It's dense, okay? So it does not, okay, let me go like that. It squishes, but it doesn't squish flat. Uh, and it's, they're terrific. You can just, uh, you know, keep a whole load of them around and use them for all different things. You can cut them into shapes, do whatever. The other things that you can use is, and I'll, I'll be doing these, but I just thought it'd be easier to show them to you first, is the Pam Pastel tools, okay? And the Pam Pastel tools come in a variety of uh, shapes. Some of them look more like wedges. I don't have a disc, but, oh, where is that disc? Oh, here it is, okay. This is not Pam Pastel, but they have discs. And they have a variety of these kind of uh, like uh, pencil, well, for lack of a better word, drawing sort of tool where you use the edge or the sides. Now they are very firm. You can see when I'm pushing, they're, they're pretty dense, okay? But you can also use, you can go to the dollar store and you can buy makeup uh, applicators, okay? The one thing I would say is different this this year, you can see that that's not as dense. It's very mushy. Uh, it does about the same thing, not as much of a control as you have with this, just because these are super dense. But they're definitely worth trying if you don't want to spend a lot of money. You know, you can use those. And of course, the uh, the makeup tools, they, they make up, yeah, makeup tools, applicators, they come in a variety of different, you know, you've got your discs and you've got your wedges. This is actually, a, um, oh, geez, you know, I don't remember if this is a Pam Pastel. Uh, it's just, you know, a little eyeshadow applicator. Yes, yes Betsy, they, they, they have those too. Oh pastel. yeah, no, I know. I just can't remember if this one is, is, is actually an eyeshadow applicator or Pam Pastel. I have a feeling that it is um, 
uh, just a you know makeup applicator. This is really handy because of course the, the the tip is designed to get into really small areas, but yet you've got a wide area here. So it's not like you're just working with a pencil tip. You've got that too. Um, so I showed you a combination, but Pam Pastel uh, has the same thing that we can also uh, buy for makeup. It's just a, a better quality, uh, sturdier. This is the Pam Pastel uh, palette applicator, and these come off not quite easily. So I put this on beforehand, so you don't have to watch me try to take my time to just scoot this down. Um, and they have uh, rounded tips, flat tips, and I believe they have some that have more of a, a point on the end. And they're really, this. these, I do use these more than I use um, these sorts of things, but I'm gonna show you everything like that. Oh yeah, and here's one of the other tips. It's got a fat and you can see it's just got a little opening and you just push that right through, which works out good. I wrote things down so I wouldn't forget what I was gonna do. Okay, uh, this is a piece of chamois. And uh, the beauty of the chamois, there are no fibers to come off. You wanna be really careful um, because uh, if there are, if you're using a paper towel, uh, the fibers could come off. These are all sanded papers. So if I took a regular paper towel and pulled it over, it's very possible I would also be leaving fibers from the paper towel behind. Okay, the chamois doesn't do that. My guess is if you were rubbing really hard, but remember we're using a light hand, <laughs> uh, you, you might have difficulty. I've used this, well, as you can see, just a couple of times just to experiment with. And I did like it, it was a different, because it almost like picked up and blended at the same time. So it was a little unusual. Uh, and then the last thing for blending, and I use this a lot too, is a hard pass towel and you use a feathering technique. So I'm gonna actually take you through and show you each of these. I'm just gonna put them kind of back in order and I'm gonna get a little sip here. The other thing I wanted to say is really, ex oh my gosh, uh, experiment with different things. Try, you know, an old playing card. Um, Sorry, uh, you know, anything at all, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, no big deal, but give it a try. And I'm just gonna reiterate that this so that everybody knows a brush will not blend, it will lift, okay? So if you're trying to blend with a brush, all you're doing is lifting the pastel off, okay? Now, somebody else may have a technique that works with a brush and they're actually blending, but I have found that as soon as you introduce bristles or anything that's got um, text, uh, textural feel to it, it had it's, oh, wow, look at all the pastel falling out of the sky. It actually just lifts it right off so that you can take pastel. So I'm just gonna show you here, okay? Okay, that just, I mean, it does blend, but what happens is, is it's taking pastel away. So in the, process of blending, and I'm not pressing hard, in the process of blending, you're actually losing pastel. And what we're trying to do is keep the pastel there instead of actually taking it off. But keep, keep a, a flat, the idea is to keep a flat, and oh, this one's pretty junky looking. Where's the one that's drilling? Oh, oh, this one is too, you can see I use them a lot. I like the flat uh, brushes because I can use the edges of them or I can use the uh, tip to actually do this. This is a new one that I I got. It hasn't been used yet, so that looks pretty good. Okay, so um, any questions on the materials? And then I'm just gonna start showing you a couple of techniques. Any questions? Okay, so here we go. So what, what we're trying to do when we blend is to actually create some sort of a, a, a background that the texture is not as strong as we see when we use the side of the strokes. So for instance, I've picked up some colors here. So we're gonna just 
I'm not going to do the same thing on each. I'll just do it, do it randomly. Okay, so I'm I'm very aware I have a, a red. Well, for anyone on the Cape, there is a red exhibit coming up uh, at uh, Katuit Center for the Arts. Uh, submissions are coming up and the whole show is just about red. Okay, if I put that there and I put this next to it, let's get this right here. Okay, I've created two different planes of color. Now, I know pastel technique. What I can do is I can come in and because this is lighter, pastels work from dark to light, usually. I can just take and I can lightly go over it. And what happens is I can lighten that. When we're using tools, what we're doing is, is we're going one step further and we're saying, I'm going to try it with the, I'll try it with the um, eye makeup applicator because this is the, the cheapest product besides the pipe foam insulation that you can use. You can put that on top and then what you can do is you can very lightly go in there. I mean, I'm doing this super, super light, but see what's coming? It's coming off on my... So I am losing a little, I wanna get rid of that line. I can come in and I can just drag that over and I can go back and forth. I can use the tip and I can go back and forth here. So what happens is I'm taking two of the same uh, color family, two hues that are the same and I am blending them with a tool instead of my finger. I can go back, if, if you didn't like those lines, you can just go back in and you can go over it. If you say, well, that's still too dramatic. I'd really like to soften that some more. You can go in and just lay that on top. See, I'm a, I'm a mark maker, I like mark. So even when I do blend, I wind up putting marks in here. Okay, so we're just gonna lightly go back and forth again. And we drag over and we're, I should have left it so you could have seen what it originally looked like, but we're obscuring that hard line that was between the two. So uh, we were creating far more of a soft line uh, with this tool between those two colors. Now let me try this again and show you. Let's do this. We're gonna do this. Again, well there, now you can see the difference between the two. You've got a very soft edge and you've got a harder edge here. Harder edge meaning that I can see a, a very clear distinction between the dark color and the light color. So I'm gonna come in and one thing I would say, if you're gonna blend with your fingers, because we didn't talk about blending with your fingers, that you try to avoid your pointer finger doing this because you can kind of get very noodly and fussy. Use the side of your hand. Okay, and I can take and I can just drag that over and I can create, I don't want to lose that color, but I'm just dragging the color right over it. A little bit more control and I can just come back. So you get the slightly different effects with both of them, but they're both achieving that same idea of um, uh, softening the edges between two colors that are next to one another. You know, I mean, you can probably think of it for a multitude of things that you would be painting, uh, you know, where you really want to just disrupt a hard edge that is there. You don't want to bring a new color in. What do you do? you can just get in and blend with your with your uh, tool. Now, the um, when we're using these tools here uh, that have the foam uh, on them, you've definitely got a lot of control. So we're going to do something a little bit different with this. And I'm going to do this on this one right here and make sure I put that on. Yes, I put that on the right one. Oh, let's do it's a different color. I have a whole lot of them here. So. Okay, I'm just keeping with colors that are in the same color family for now. So we're gonna have the red and we're gonna put the blue around the outside. 
a hard edge very distinct. Okay, so I'm going to take this tool now and you can come and you can just drag out. And when I'm dragging out, I wind up creating, I can create a starburst effect if I want to, but again, it's all about the hard edges. You're losing that hard edge that you, that you started with there. Betsy? Oh, yes? Question, what is this paper, this looks? I'm not familiar with it. Lux is uh, Lux is uh, it's it's an expensive paper, hence it's smaller than all the rest here. <laughs> uh, it has a texture that reminds me more of a pastel premier, a little heavier duty than uh, this is on a heavier duty card than you yeah. is. Uh, you are to me always seems to like raise off of the paper, you know, even if you tape it and pin it mm -hmm. down. People say that this is better if you uh, use the mounted. So it's got a heavy card, so it doesn't uh, yeah. it doesn't curl. But it is it's you know something like not as te te textured as pastel premier, but I think more than uh, you are. It's a oh, really that nice sounds paper. good. Yeah, yeah it's I don't know a where really I nice paper for blending. So oh. let's say here we say, oh, you know, you, you want to have uh, another color. We've got, we've done these with, you know, safe colors, you know, colors that are, you know, within the, the red zone here, okay, and within the blue zone here. So let's say we want to bring in another color. Well, the reality of it is, is for the red here, I'm going to turn this around now, and I'm going to spin it so we can see our analogous colors. We're going to go right back to the red, and it's this one right here. So I'm going to put that in the middle. There's the red. That's what we used right here. So I, you could make a jump and put an orange here, okay? Definitely, because this is just your um, tertiary colors that are here. This is your, your um, primary, and this is your secondary, your tertiary are here. So you can make a leap and put an orange here. But if you stay within that band there, you know that you're not going to wind up with crazy, crazy muddy colors. So we're going to try, let's, let's, well, let's play safe here. Okay, red. I'm going to put a little bit of orange in here. Got an orange right here. And let me just, where's my, a little bit. Um, and let's check this. The outside color is this one right here. That's the blue. And there's the orange. Okay, if you squint your eyes and you look at this one, we can still see a line between the two. So we know that they're not actually the same value, but it's not as extreme as it was with here. So what I'm going to do is I think that one is going to, or, oh, what am I doing? I'm not doing it on the blue side. Well, I'll show you on the blue side after I do this one over here. Sorry about that. <laughs> Got carried away. We'll see what happens when we do that. So here's the orange here. Okay, we're going to look at here. There's the, the red. Definitely darker, right? Here's the peach. Wow, those guys are pretty close in value. Really close in value. So if I was going to choose and I wanted to make a transitional blending where it looks like it's just slowly moving, I'm going to put it on the light side because these guys are close in value. If I put it on this side, oops, yeah, if I put it on this side, I'm going to get more of a contrast. And we'll see what happens when we do both of those. So I'm going to put the orange here. I'm going to do the same sort of thing. This time, well, it's this. I'm going to check my, always wipe these guys. You know, these are my Swiffers that I use for wiping. They do stain. Okay, and I'm just going to slowly move back and forth. You can tell if you're blending and not lifting by the lack of dust that falls. Okay, if you're getting a lot of dust that is falling, it means you're, you're lifting more than you're blending. That's like number one. That's a really easy way to tell. So let's let's get this guy filled in a little bit. I didn't fill them in, so there I can. So I now have made a nice little transition there because I have two colors that are close in value. If I take that orange, the same thing I had with the, these, it was a little 
a little bit more work to put it on this side. I'm going to use this. I'm going to fill this is a great way to just fill in. You know, you're trying to you have all those little holes from the paper showing through, especially on sanded paper. You know, you make a mark and you can see the holes here. I can see some right here. If I can come in and I can, I can just fill them in with this. Okay, so distinction there, same thing. Oh, let me try something different. Okay, I haven't used my pipe foam insulation. And I'm just going to go back and forth. Nothing's falling. It means I'm blending. This guy's a little noisier. This guy, I think I, I didn't clean him well enough. Sorry. Okay, well, you can see what happens. I didn't clean it well enough. A little the blue that was in there. And of course, blue and orange make, uh, uh, you know, a neutral color. So I've kind of lost that pretty uh, orange that was there because uh, this had blue over it. So I'm just going to go over that a little bit more there. Turn around and pay attention. Okay, I use this end here. This end here, right there, is fine. So I can go and I can just drag that over and same sort of thing. This is, it tends to be a little bit noisy. You can hear that paper. So again, you get another blending there. Um, when you're, oh yeah, I was going to show you with this. So with the red, I mean, the orange and the blue here, it is very, very close. And I'm going to make this guy just a little bit bigger here. So you're going to see what happens when you put the complement next to it. So what happens when we make when we put complements next to uh, one another? One, we can create a feeling of tension because they both are opposite one another on the color wheel. You can leave a little line there that keeps a space in between the two, but I'm going to fill that right in. Go right over you. I can already see that starting to shift and turn into a neutral. For this one here, because I want to have a lot more control, I could use one of my smaller tools and I could just get in and I just want to have a real neutral edge in here. So I'm just really coming in and there's this color that is appearing between the blue I think I'm just going to go in one more. I don't think you really need to see the color wheel. Let me just go in one more so you can see this closer. Is that better? You want me to go in one more time? Looks good. It looks good. Okay. Okay. So I'm getting this very lovely neutral that is happening between these two. Again, they were close in value. They may not have been identical, but they were close. The blue and the orange. Okay, a lot more control here. You know, this is a really good, let's say you're doing, uh, I was going to do one coming up um, probably in the winter where you're doing, um, oh my gosh, uh, the, the lit sign. How come the, my mind's going totally blank? But um Okay, somebody help me here. What do you call those signs that are all lit up and they have crazy like a colors? neon sign? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, neon, neon signs. It's a great way of doing neon signs because what you're doing is is you're here, all same family here, not they're complementary. But I can still see a color. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a muddy color. It's a, actually a very um very pretty color. It's neutral. It's really almost taking on a greenish look, which is probably we could we could make a case for it looking a little bit green because yellow and blue make green, and this is orange and blue. Typically, it makes something that's a little bit more neutral. It is not a a, a green that's standing out, so it's kind of like a little bit of a neutral green. And you get lovely. Now let's see what happens. I'm gonna bring up the dark blue that's here. So we're just doing everything that has to do with contrast. Okay, here we can see a huge contrast in value. Okay, so now we're taking this, this color here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the same tool. A lot of control with these little tools. Same with these. And this guy here, I'll show you that in a minute. So if you're getting in there doing little, oh, what am I doing? Oh, I have to put the orange in. Jeez. 
Okay, so I'm gonna just put the orange right around it right there. Okay, so we've got between the value shift with this being much lighter and that being darker and the fact that they're complements, we've got a real and in little intensity. I'm not, I don't know if I'd say it's uh, super intense, but we're definitely getting this conflict of those uh, colors. I'm gonna do the same thing again so because I want a lot of control with these because I'm working with and I want it, look at this, so that I can come out and I can gradually do it there. And I'm going to do it on this side of the blue. And you want to know what's really interesting? Depending on which color is on top, sometimes you wind up with two different variations. This one's even lighter because the orange was the orange was on top, I would guess. There we go. And I can come back in and I can just put little marks in here to get that, that orange uh, standing up. So a lot of control, less control, but you get to, you get big areas taken care of. Same thing with these, you know, big areas, uh, different sorts of uh, techniques. You saw that when I use this, it took a little bit more of the pastel away on the UART. UART I don't use a lot. So I'm gonna put something over here because um, I'd like to see, how that, how that would work if I tried. Let's see, the pastel mat is a little bit out of the focus of the camera. Oh, thank you. Thank you. There we go. Thank you. Okay, there's a dark one. I, I, I just think it just fills, it fills the tooth so quickly, so nicely. And I've got a lighter one here. Now let's see if this happens because pastel matte, I often think the first layer is the hardest to blend, okay? So what's happened here, it's not moving the same way as this. Look, I can see that coming right over on this. It's not, I can still see that line in there. Pastel matte, at least the first layer, tends to grip it super tight and um, trying to blend is a little bit more difficult. Now, what happens is, is the more layers I put on, the easier it is to blend. Hey, Siri, how do you spell the email? Pardon me? Hey. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll say it again. I didn't hear what you said. Okay, maybe somebody just has their... Um, I thought it was a question. And we'll come in and we'll clean that up a bit. So Betsy? Yeah. It's Paula. Yeah. Paula. When when do you under what circumstances do you find yourself blending as as you've described it? So well, you know what? I, yeah, I'll be quite honest. I don't look at seeing in here. Look at it's hardly moving coming out. Uh That's I don't the actually... one thing about past yeah, pastel mat I find unforgiving, quite frankly especially in the beginning. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, because whatever you put down, it's, wow, this That's is- That's it. Yeah, whatever you put down, it just hangs on to it. Uh, it is uh, forgiving in terms of, you can actually get in there and you can um, layer on top of it. Uh, and then you can pick it up. So for instance, uh, let's put, uh, if we look here, at our greens, opposite of green is this. Let's see, this is, we've got that red. So let's put a little bit of red here and I'm gonna put the dark one next to the dark. And I put the dark down. I'm gonna use this tool again. Yeah, look at that. It's just hardly moving. I mean, I'd not have to work that hard over here, but the more I do it, the more I can see it. But I'm also kind of making, I feel like I'm on the verge of making mud because I'm like, you can hear, I'm grinding it into the paper. So let's put this red back down again. And we'll put the green back down again. And the next layer should move a little bit easier. Uh, so now I don't have to, I don't have to, 
push as hard and I'm starting to get a blend. And because these guys are uh, opposites, one, um, I'm getting a neutral color, but I can still see the green and I can still see the blue. So with pastel matte, if you're blending and it's the first layer, I'd say blend, put down another layer and then blend again. These guys will blend pretty much right off the bat. This one, this one, you are, for some reason, I think it, it tends to lift easier. Lux is, Lux is really good. Lux uh, blends super easy. Boy, I must have got something dirty on that. Let me just kind of shape that up a little bit. Look at, see, you can just go over it. It's looking dirty. You just go over and you get that in there. Now, um, okay, so I've showed you um, the foam core and I've showed you the foam wedges, whether it's a pastel mat or whether it is the beauty store that you buy them. Let's see what happens when um, we take, um, let's see, which one should we do next? So we did a little bit with, did we do much with the palette knife we did? Okay, the shapers and the uh, chamois and the hard pastel. And Paula had asked, you know, like, when do I really blend? Okay, I don't really blend a lot, but there are times when there's little sections of a painting where um, I don't want to have, you know, let me show you. Well, this is the one we just did in the pop-up class, the, the butterfly. So the background in the butterfly, we wanted to have it gradual and blended. Now, uh, what you can do is, so we started with blues, we went to uh, blue, green, blue, uh, yellow, green, yellow, and we had a little peach in there too. So we wound up doing a nice smooth transition. Now, what I tend to do, which I did do in this too, is I do come back in because I do like the textural feel. So I came back in and I did add a layer of pastel on top of that, but you could have very easily just left it with the blending in the background. So you get real gradual, very atmospheric appearances. Uh, sometimes if you're doing things that have, um, like I'll use the example of like copper pots or glass or something like that, where you really want it to have a smooth reflections on the water, uh, you know, it would work wonderful with that. Um, and of course you'd get just different, uh, final appearances based on what tool you used. Um, anybody who does blending, what, where is it that you do blending? Anybody do much blending out there? I do it in the backgrounds a lot more. Okay, yep, yeah, yeah. So what's really nice is, you know, in certain backgrounds, you really want to uh, simplify them and uh, you don't want as many of your pastel strokes to show. So by taking that, oh, here, you know, this is like not a. That's Betsy, I blend clouds. Clouds, yes, yes, you could do it with clouds. Okay, so let's take this guy. Sunsets. Pardon me? Sunsets. Sunset. Yeah, yeah, you could do it with sunsets. See, the, the, and again, it's all that gradual. You're thinking of, yeah. okay, color wheel, you know, you jump too quickly, you're going to have a distinct, that's what we were yeah. doing in here. You have a real distinct edge. You yeah. want to have a gradual feel. You want to take them very slowly, move to, you know, another color family. So uh, this is not a finished painting. It was just a plein air real quick. I really don't like this color down here. And now it's sat here for a while because I, I really didn't like it. So in the background here, there's a little bit of blending that I did, not a lot, but there's a little bit of blending back here. Let's say I, what I wanted to do was to bring up a little bit of green in here. So we know blue and green, I'm gonna test that right here. Okay, so there's a dark blue and you can see that's a dark green. So now I can see a little bit of my shadow there. That's a little annoying. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to break up that blue by bringing in some green, I'll just do this. And then, oh, let's try this with the chamois. Okay, I mean, this is my go-to. Truthfully, that's my go-to. And these guys are my go-to. Those are the two that I use the most. The other ones, you know. That's the, that first go-to, was that the insulation? That, yeah, it's the pipe foam insulation. Okay. You know, I can cut it, I can get little tiny edges. I can, you can do a 
call it big, big swatches with a big. Yeah, big that's swatch. what I use all the time. I too. just, I just really, yes, you can. It's just and terrific. It's, and it's nice and cheap. <laughs> yes, and it's nice and cheap. Okay, so now I'm getting in here and I'm just using the chamois. I just took my finger, stuck it in, came around. Okay, again, it's a pointer. So be really careful. You're not going to start noodling the thing to death. Okay, but I get an edge and I can come in and I can kind of like obliterate it, but I have really changed the solid blue. I do feel like it's lifting a little bit of the blue underneath it, but it's not lifting as much as if I was using a paper towel. Now, of course, it would be different if that was a, a, a wet underpainting that had dried, uh, you know, I'd have a different, but this is I'm doing dry pastel on dry pastel. So I'm kind of starting to break up that um, really uh, ugly background, thinking of my color, blue, green, green. Okay, I, let me put like a little bit of blue in here that's a little bit lighter. These colors are all compatible. I get a little bit of light coming in here. Okay, the sun's coming from this direction. Oh, the sun's coming from that direction. <laughs> Let's see, the sun's here. Okay, so I'm going to put this in here. I'll use that same thing and I'll twist it around my finger. And these you just clean them in the sink, you know, soap and water. But, uh, you know, and because it's not actually the tip and it's like little folds, you don't really wind up. Uh, oh, look at that. You can look, it's like I can keep little marks showing there, just little tiny the way I did it. And it's blending and not much is coming off. Some is coming off, but not much. Let's say, say, okay, I really want to pop it up. The light's coming from over here. I want it to feel like there's something that's catching light again. I don't want to, ooh, this is too hard. Look at the way that's dragging on there. This pastel's too hard. I have to get one that's softer. So let me just clean this guy right here. I'm going to quit putting things down. What did I do with it? Okay. I'll just take this down here. Okay, I'll take this and I'll just put like a little bit of yellow here. Now see how much that yellow stands out there? That would be like really distracting in that background, wouldn't it? So let's see what happens if I use this. Go to a clean part because I don't want that dark. Uh, wrap it around my finger again. And I can come in here. Let's see, and I can just very slowly get rid of it. So if you have an area that one, you just have way too much detail in the background and it just it keeps moving forward because you've got too much detail or you've got um, an area that looks like a curtain, you know, when you do like people, sometimes you do a sky or trees off in the distance and it just looks like a, a curtain came down in the back. Nothing really is, even the sky when it's misty, it's a variety of different colors. It's not just a curtain of a dull blue. So I can bring that in and I can even say, okay, so there'd be a little, little chancy here because that blue and yellow could present a little bit of a problem, but I'm just going to very lightly put that in there. Just, I'm going to come in and again, see, I can just obliterate the marks, but the color still stays there. And I wind up with a much more appealing background in there. And if I decided, okay, I don't like those marks, well, I mean, I could take my finger and do it. But if I used this guy right here, this, uh, this is why I mean, I feel like this also lifts. Ah, it's not lifting it. Ah, I really thought that that was gonna lift it. Maybe that's something else there because that, I'm just gonna tap it with my finger to just push it. So you get very soft, disrupted feel when you use this, okay? That's one of the, that's one of the things that I like about the chamois. Not that I use it very much at all, but um, there's not a heck of a lot of control unless you're being like really fastidious about wrapping this around and getting it straight and doing all that jazz. Well, I don't, I just, just wrap it around and go for it because I'm looking for something that will wind up just blending in. It's the same way I could have done with this guy here is I could have come in and I could have used the 
um, uh, chamois, but the, I was trying to keep the different layers like this obvious. So if I did too much of the chamois, I was going to wind up really blending everything. And I again, the idea that I have for blending is that it um, it keeps the color, that I don't wind up losing the color that I have down there. And all those colors still exist in that. So that works out works out really well. Now the other one, okay, did this, okay, this guy right here, this is called a shaper. Now I used to use these a lot more and I don't use them very much and I have no idea where they are. So I was tempted to go order some more, but I knew they weren't going to be here by today. So I didn't bother, but I did find this one. And this is really like a heavy, you can feel it. It's almost like, it feels like the uh, tip of a rubber eraser. It is not a rubber eraser, but it has that sort of feel. It's it's very rigid. Uh, it has a firm edge that, you know, you can't push in. It stays, it holds its shape. Uh, and now, if you're going to be doing this a lot on sanded paper, my guess is you would wind up losing the tip because you would be sanding it down while you were doing this. But for the um, for this, let's say um, I've got let's try got a new color. Let's try another one on pastel. Let's see how it works on all of them. Okay, let's say I have pastel mat. We've done this before where we're um, creating a shape and a shape. Look at how different all of these are. This is why I like pastel matte. Look at how that just went on there and gripped it like crazy. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this guy and I'm just gonna push it in so it's solid. To try to make a solid area. Use one of these. These tools work out really good for that. Now, if you're really interested in pastel, um, pan pastels or how to use pan pastels, two things I would suggest go on their website. They will have different um, examples of how you use your tool. The other thing is to watch what um, Dawn Emerson does with pan pastels because she uses a lot of it in very uh, fun, unusual, lively, textural ways. I'm just going to show you how you can take this and you can, so we're going to come in here. Okay, this edge is easy to get to. This edge is right here. That edge is there. Let's do this with the two of them. We want to get the color in here. And what's really nice with this is you can take, I'm going to start with the Lux because I know that one's jumping in, and I can just rub that around. And you're basically pushing the pastel so that you can fill in small areas. One of the reasons I don't use this a lot is because you can get really very um, noodly with it. And when I still use the word noodly, which I do like, it's when you're constantly working on an area and you like kill it because what you've done is you just like overworked it immensely. But this guy, it's really handy. Let's see how different they do. Okay, it's moving pretty, oh, that's moving pretty good. So I'm trying to take the yellow and go around the edge. Looks as though, but I don't wanna put it on that. I want to see, I'll put a little bit here and a little bit there. And these are actually uh, Dick Blick and they sell them in sets. So you got, uh, I think, five different tips. And I can come in here and I can push that in. I can clean it off and I can come back and see, I can just come around and I can get that blue back up again because I'm just pushing the blue that got disrupted by the yellow. I tried to use two opposite colors so you could see it very clearly. Okay, and this one's probably gonna be the hardest to move. Yeah, this is like, it's like hardly moving at all. Betsy, I just wanted to share with you that um, I ordered a pan pastel book that's supposed to be the best and people said, because it's like the only, they're, you know, outside of Dawn Emerson's, it's oh, coming okay. by a little boat from Europe. And I'll share, you know, the book when it comes in and see if oh, it's- Oh, yeah. Good. 
because there's really not a lot of information. And I was so sad Dawn's workshop didn't make it. At, at Falmouth, I know, you know what? Overall, the workshops, live workshops have been very hard to fill. You know, yeah. It's not just Falmouth. Well, um, and this was kind of a minimal crowd too that you were working on. Yeah. You know, with hand yes. tests. You know, yeah, exactly. So anyway. But I'll share that information because it's Oh, that'd be, be great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Send it to me. And then what I'll do is definitely I'll put it in the I'll put it in the newsletter. So, Perfect. Yeah. So this here, a lot more work. But if you're trying to rectify edges, it works out well because it, it does a little bit of lifting, but it does more blending and you can get in there and you can just go right around. Now, technically, where to go? You could do it with this too. Okay. Both of these would do the same thing. I could just come in here and I could just, what well, that was dirty. I have to be, to pay attention. Okay, and that does about the same thing. The difference with this is, um, let's say I wanted to take and I wanted to pull the orange in and I want to get really thin straight lines. Look at what's happening here. Look at this really neat effect that I'm getting. And I'm just blending. So this almost acts like a, uh, uh, what's that word I'm trying to think of? Uh, a script, a tool where you can, yeah, it's not going to show up as much in here. Oh, well, there, see, see, it lifts and blends at the same time. I want to get a color that's down underneath. And I'm lifting off. I'm thinking of that. There's a term for that, it begins with an S. I just thought of that now, but. Let me move that in closer so you guys can see that. Okay. Okay, so there's this. Lifts and blends. Okay, blends, you're pushing it and you're filling in tiny little spaces maybe that you weren't able to get on with your pastel stick or it actually takes and it lifts off the color that's underneath. So I wind up not working as much and because it's actually lifting that blue that's on there comes across so you can really play with a lot Linda I can see you doing this <laughs> yeah do a lot with this so th these these guys are kind of fun to play with um and the last one I'm going to show you which is another one of my go-to's let's go back to the greens because I haven't done a lot on the greens Let's get this green right in here and we'll get this green. Can you nudge the camera down a little bit? It's just oh, out yeah, of frame. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. I forgot I had um, brought it in. Thank you. Is that better? Or should I go one more? Yeah, uh, that's better. Okay, good. Now let me just... And just one second from my end. I feel like it's it's easier using this than moving the camera. If I actually move the camera, I wind up with a huge mess. Everything goes pock eyed. Okay, so I was going to show you feathering. Okay, those are two soft pastels. Okay, I'm going to get in there. I'm going to just use a different tool just so that you guys can see. So this guy's coming in, does a little bit of lifting, not too much. I can just take and I can just rub it around. Do the light one first and then I'll do the dark one. I'm not seeing a lot of dust falling, so pretty good with that. You notice it's not quite as dark. Let me put it back on again. See that? It's a little bit more. So you wind up filling that tooth in. So these guys here do, that's what I mean by lifting. It's coming off on this. Look at that. Okay. And this is fun because you can do that. I can check and I can bring that color over here. Okay, I'm getting carried away. Okay, so what feathering is, is you have soft pastel down and I'm gonna show you it with a layer in there and right here. And you take a hard pastel. Okay, I'm guess this one is a 
uh, greenish yellow. It's got a little bit more intensity. Oh, did you see it? Oh, you can't see it. Okay. Let me go out one more. There we go. Okay. And you just, you're just taking and you're using the pastel. It's hard to do the blending. Not far off what we did with this when we went like that, but here we were lifting it. And this one here, it's actually, some of it's coming off on the pastel, but not a lot. And you can come around, you can, I mean, I'm just doing it randomly. You could do it very carefully, but the feathering, okay. See this hard edge is starting to disappear here. I can come back in another direction. And this gives you a lot of texture when you use this. These other ones, some of these other ones, there's really not a lot of texture because you're using a foam and the foam, okay, obliterates the texture, which is, and I like texture, which is why I don't really use this a lot. Just by doing that, I got rid of the texture that was there, okay? And I say, oh, I want the texture back again. Just come in with a hard pastel. And what happens is that hard pastel will drag over the soft pastel and it pulls it in. If it starts to not pull it in, it may mean that you just didn't have a, a heavy enough layer in there. So you can see here, and I'm pulling it up, going up. So textural blending, and that's more of an optical blending because what happens is from a distance, that's probably going to look more like a, a medium blue, but up close, I'm going to be actually able to see that there's a, a yellow green on top that falls value-wise in between these two guys and I'm bridging it with this texture, okay? If we get up close to any of the ones where we used foam, you wind up with a soft, well, I went over them so now you can't see it, but you wind up with a softer transition and you don't see the texture. So, you know, that's that's a, a personal preference. There's really no uh, right or wrong to that. I'd say the, the biggest issue comes, look, I can take my finger and I can use the side of your finger and come back in. I can just knock that back down again if I want to, is that, you know, where, wherever you are adding texture, it is going to uh, attract more attention. It may not be noticeable from a distance, but it will be noticeable from when you're up close. If you're trying to simplify, using these guys are great because all you're doing is you're taking your colors and you're able to just uh, merge them together. Look at this, so just merge that guy right together. Okay, so see, would now, you ever use the paper stumps? You know what? I <laughs> yeah, you can use a paper stump. I just uh, I find them annoying because they you, once they get dirty, then you're always doing uh, trying to unravel the silly thing. So that just truly drives me nutty. But yes, you could do a stump. What it is is this thing in a different way. Uh, uh, it takes the place of the stump. These tools take the way. Uh, take away um oh do the same thing as a stump also because they're able to get in there because they have small little let's say okay let me just wipe that i want this to come up again okay so i am just going to get in there i'm going to lift and blend okay a little bit's on there so i have listed but look at i've got that hard edge back again so i went too crazy blending Okay, I've got a hard edge that I, I brought back up again. Um, this guy up here, let's go like this. Okay, look at the, this, look at this Lux. It's just, isn't that gorgeous? I mean, that's just really fabulous. Okay, take, blend in between this guy. This is what a stump would be doing. Okay, just uh, you get a very different, look at that lovely texture that's showing up here. And 
texture. Now I'm going to use this. Not a heck of a lot of texture. See that? This is, well, this guy, and again, I'm using them a little dirty because I'm not, let me flip it over this way. Okay, so what's happened is here, I'm able to do blending with the foam and I don't have texture. I use this guy. I use my uh, hard pastel, same thing. And I wind up with texture. So you have to decide, you know, which way you really want uh, to what you want to do with your your blended uh, your blending tools, uh, and I guess the easiest way to think of it is is if it's a foam, it's going to uh, blend it smoother, and if it's something that has um, a tip on it, you know that's a little harder, that's a harder tip, that's going to, and this is harder, you're going to actually have a stroke that's there. Optical blending here because I can still see all the different colors, um, but from a distance that's going to look very muted because they're opposites. We already talked about that part. Over here, I'm just going to put a little bit more of that blue right in here just to clean it up a little bit, and that's the beauty. Okay, it was a little dirty, and I just come in, and I don't have strokes, and if I go this way, I can pull the orange over it, and I'm getting a neutral and I'm not going too crazy uh, with the pressure. So I'm not like rubbing it in like that. I'm just very lightly pulling the, here we go, pulling the pastel out, pulling the plasma. In each of these papers are different. Look at this, it's keeping the hard edge. That one, it's obliterated the edge. This pastel mat's hanging on to it. And then here we have, that obliterates the edge altogether. So you could have really a lot of fun. And truthfully, not a lot of money. Like I said, the uh, hardware store, dollar store. If you really like these, I'd say it's definitely worth buying the Pam Pastel ones because they are going to be sturdier. You'll get a different uh, technique, uh, finished tech um, appearance. But these guys are great to start with. I think a set of the five of these was like $15 Dick Blick shapers. And I think that was it. And then your hard pastels, everybody's got hard pastels hanging around, you know? Okay. I, I love doing this feathering. I just think it's like so much fun. I want that color on top. Optical blending. I do not want the colors to merge. I want them to sit on top of one another. And uh, that and that. With our two tools, we'll do that. You want to blend them so they merge. You use your softer tools. That's probably the simplest way to describe them. Um, and then again, it's where do you want those? Well, I'm going to come out now. Okay. And the question really is, where where do you want the where do you want the blending? Um, and by using a tool instead of your finger, your, your finger is one finite size. And by having a variety of these different foam uh, tools that have different edges and different sizes, uh, straight edge, curved edge, smooth edge, you're able to uh, you know use the tool that's appropriate or you think it's gonna enhance your painting. Uh, and it's the same with using the, the hard pastels or the shaper, you can get in there and you can um, get a smaller size that you're not able to do with your finger. And truthfully, it keeps your hands from getting into the pastel. Key things to remember, if you're doing this and there is a lot of pastel dust that is uh, flying around, it means that the paper either can't handle it or that um, it's you're, brought, you're taking the pastel off. And remember, the idea of blending is, is that you're, you want the pastel to stay on the paper. You're not lifting it. Lifting it is when, and you can do that easily with a kneaded eraser. I think I've shown that before. You know, just take your kneaded eraser. Just gonna, that's one of the easiest ways. And I can just get in there and, and I can just rub it right off. And it goes back, lift. Take it away, don't like it there anymore. 
Scratch. Okay. Look at, look at all this. This is why I don't like brushing either. Look at all this dust. Where do you think that dust is going? Hopefully not in my lungs. So be really careful when you do lifting because you do not want that, all that dust in the air. Okay, which is why focus on blending light hand, <laughs> you know, and um, lift when you need to. And that there wasn't really as much dust, but I mean, let's face it, if you're doing a large area, you're not going to do it with the um, needed eraser. You're going to use a brush. Stand over a, a, a trash can, dust it right in, go outside you know, take off large areas with a large brush. Uh, all these papers will be able to handle it. Pastel mat will be the hardest to get it off though, because it just stays. You can see right here, just look at, look at, does, it's not even moving with my hand. These guys moving a little bit more with that guy, a little bit more with this guy. But look at, he still has that hard edge right there. That's why I like that paper. <laughs> Uh, any questions on that? I didn't talk a lot about the, the color wheel, but I think, you know, you guys are all, um, you know, used to choosing colors, you know, based on, you know, intuitively or the color wheel. But just always remember the, the idea for the blending is you want those particles to be there so that they're interacting. You don't want to blend them so much that now what you've done is you've really just rubbed them together and you you really cannot see what those colors were. So keep saying to yourself, you wanna be able to see the color. So stop blending when you start losing uh, the feeling of color interacting and you're just kind of like merging it all together. I suppose it's like an oil painter that starts mixing too many oil paints together. The next thing they do is they just have mud. Okay, any questions or? Hopefully that was helpful. It gave you some different ideas of how you can handle, and it can be used. Blending can be used for a lot of a lot of things. Um, it just depends, you know, whether you want something smooth or textural or a gradation or, you know, a, a bold edge. You know, what people have mentioned skies, water, certain objects. You want it to have a more blended appearance. Uh, you know, there was an artist that um, I was looking at and he was talking about how blending is really nice to do with um, portraits. But one of the things that he always does is he makes sure that he, again, never blends so much that he can't see the different colors that he's used. So that light hand is, uh, you know, is key to, uh, you know, getting a nice color combination. Hmm. Questions or? I have a quick question. Sure. Based on what we've been doing in class about, you know, perspective and would blend in which area would you think blending would be most helpful? The foreground, the middle ground or the background? Well, blending, blending where you don't have a lot of texture when you're actually blending with something that's soft definitely creates that feeling. It's the same, you know, not really quite the same. This is all close, but you yeah. get like this atmospheric, very soft appearance, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's in the background that works out well. Uh, the blending where you're, you're having more textural uh, feeling that could be in the foreground or the middle ground, right. but the, right. uh, softer uh, blended areas, you really work out well, you know, atmosphere perspective, you know, you don't want as much detail. And it's a really great way is let's say if you did put in too much detail in an area and uh, you just got carried away, you knew you wanted to keep it simplified. It's just what I was doing with that, um, the background with that partially finished um, uh, floral painting is, you know, I can just build up that very slowly you know, using that chamois cloth and just bringing a little touches in, even though my stroke is obvious, the chamois then just uh, dissipates the particles. So they kind of like move around and merge with the colors that are underneath. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone else? Any questions, comments? Not a question, but I just was especially interested in the differences of the paper because I haven't had a lot of experience with different papers. So that was 
nice to see. Thanks. Yeah, you know, I debated, thank you for saying that, I debated whether I should just do, you know, uh, a, a scene and show different things that I thought, you know, part of the whole idea of that I wanted to share was the different strokes you can make, and it makes a difference to your paper. Now, if you threw in uh, pastel premiere, which is one of them, it probably would be closer to either of these two right here. If you're going to do color fix, which is uh, another great paper, uh, you'd, you'd see a little bit more like this pastel mat. Uh, you would is is uh, pretty much a standalone in the the way that that paper works. There's not a lot of papers that have that same sort of quality where it feels soft, but it just hangs on. Then, of course, it depends. Do you have an underpainting? How many layers are you already have on there? So you know, just play around with uh, you know different ideas and things. But you have to try a toothbrush. What happens with a toothbrush mm -hmm. when you kind of like drag color? And you, you're going to start to get a feel for, do I need a lot of pastel or do I need just a little pastel? Okay. And which colors are actually going to work well together in a continuum and which ones are going to add a little bit more excitement because of the, the contrast. Thanks. Okay. All right. I found it all very helpful. Thank you very oh, good, much. Good, good. Well, have it's fun with it. You know, it's just like, it's one of these techniques. You might not use it all the time or use any of these all the time, but I think I think most people do wind up having something that they fall back on when they want to blend. You know, for me, I do really like using the um, pipe foam insulation for large areas. You know, I think that's super handy because you can have like really big pieces of it. This isn't even, I don't know where my really big one went, but you can have, you know, even much bigger pieces than that, or you can have little small ones. Um, either way, and I love scribit. Oh, that's it. that name's going to drive me nuts. It's just like I'm, I'm tongue twisted around it when you pull something and you get the design that shows up behind it because you've lifted the color a little bit. I'll, I'll figure it, out what it is. Oh, is it an embosser? Or? An embosser, uh, Betsy? Pardon me? Was it? Were you thinking of an embosser tool? No, no, it's an actual technique. Uh, I believe scumbling? It, was it scumbling? No, no. The yeah, scumbling is a way of blending. I didn't really talk about blending because I was doing with, uh, you know, scumbling yeah. because I was doing it with tools. But, you know, scumbling is, you know, s very slowly layering uh, pastels on top of one another. You have to be really careful with the values, making sure that, you know, you've uh, got a handle on uh, value moving from dark to light, and that can go to mud pretty quickly. I will, I will look it up <laughs> and see what it is. Clearly, it's not a word I use all the time. It just came into my yeah. head. But um, well, thank you everybody for coming. It's very possible yeah. that November and uh, December are going to be. Um, on the second Tuesday of the month. I haven't figured that out yet. There's a couple of things happening. And um, I do have a, a paint along in another two weeks. And I forgot to look and see what's on my chart for what it is. So I will put that in the um, follow up email so everybody knows, uh, you know, what the uh, paint along is like, because that's what I try to do is I'm you're not just painting with me. I'm teaching you things as as we go through it. So, and I'll tell you, people did a really nice job with those, the blended backgrounds with the butterfly um, the other day. I love was, that blended background on the butterfly. Yeah. Oh, I wish it's, I had signed up for it now, but I, it's, <laughs> it touches me out so much. <laughs> That's all right. They're, they're there. If you ever decide to, you want to do it, you can always, you know, buy the uh, video do it okay. but th that's fine either, either way but yeah it's it's a lot of fun okay well thank you so much and um i shall see you either in a couple weeks or next month thank you Betsy. Betsy. thank Bye. you so much Bye. Bye.